I gotta go this way. What is it? TV, that's what it looks like.
The one with the Canada flights?
pick it up. Go! Closing the turn there. Oh man, that's right close. We don't have any left. No. Oh man, that.
Now it's the 
and it's through an actual world record on my best work of Australia. So I got 45, 63. A world number record, 146, 11. This is my achievement, so much inspiration. We're going to send to the road in the ship pass, and we're going to send to the road in the ship pass, and we're going to send to the road in the
Tour of the Long City at 50.19 display. Service to the World Record Holder in the 100 times throw short course.
home crowds with a teammate Sydney. Yeah, it's always really fun to compete at an international event in Canada. Yeah, well, it was great to see 2001 last time we were here. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Lily King. And that's some fun energy. You love to see that familiarity. You love to see the friendly banter back and forth. And that's world-class swimming right there. And we're just getting to witness the fun of it uh, behind the scenes. So really, really special race there. And we're gunning for another great race here on the men's side. Indeed, the men's 100-meter breaststroke, half the distance, twice the fun, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. Love it. Final coming this up. This is the men's 100-meter breaststroke final. We've had lots of Canadian content in other races. Not in, in this one, eight. but a Brazilian begins Brazil. in lane number Sao eight. Pumputas. Pumputas. Earning a lane in the final here. He'll be in lane number eight, trying to challenge in from the outside of pretty Brazil, strong field. Gomez Jr. Gomez Jr., 36 years of age. This is a Brazilian veteran breaststroker that has seen a pool or two in his day. Oh, no doubt. 
seven, representing so Lithuania. Brazilian bookenders Andreas in the pool. The Lithuanian Andreas Sidlauskas will take the spot beside Popitas in lane number seven. In lane two, representing Macedonia, Chow Man Hu. Chow Man Hu was the flag bearer from Macau at the 2014 Asian Games. In lane six, representing Netherlands, Casper Dutch swimmer Casper Corbo. Of course, representing the Netherlands in lane number six. In lane three, representing Japan, Yoshiki Yamanaka. Yoshiki Yamanaka, Japanese breaststroker, has two previous World Cup medals. This is his first stop of the circuit so in far for the 2022 five, season. Representing United States of America. Nick USA's Fink. Nick Fink won in Berlin last week. He was a bronze medalist at last year's Short Course World Championships and a bronze medalist and at the World Championships in Budapest United this year. States of America, Reese Whitley. And Reese was the runner-up to Nick Fink in Berlin just a week ago. He had to swim the this first heat the this morning all alone and somehow snag lane four with his results. So you got to hope that with a lot of competition in here tonight right beside Fink, We'll expect a bit better even on his performance end. Yeah, that 57.08 time. Uh, it was amazing to see that stand up from the first heat all the way to the end. So Whitley in lane four, Fink in five. Seems like that's where the race will be in the middle of the pool, but maybe the book ending Brazilians will have something to say about it in lanes one and eight. We will see. Keep an eye on Yamanaka in lane number three as well. And we're underway. Men's 100 meter breaststroke, four lengths of the pool. Fink and Whitley were one and two last week in Berlin. They are in lanes four and five. Whitley in four, Fink in five. And Fink has really improved over time. He was very close to making not one, but two Olympic teams, stuck around the sport, stayed confident, stayed in his own lane, and managed to get on the Tokyo Olympic team. And since then has been breaking records, American record holder in this event, and he's currently first at the 50. 26 and a half seconds, Fink just ahead, but here comes Whitley charging in lane number four. But it is still Nick Fink. Now with less than 25 meters to go, Nick Fink trying to hold on and trying to win his second straight World Cup in this 100 meter breaststroke. And Nick Fink is in control. He's going to do it. Who's taking second behind him? It is Corbo, the Dutch swimmer, who comes through in 57.33, just ahead of Reese Whitley of the US. But it is Nick Fink on top in 56.39. And a thumbs up from Fink there. He's happy with that swim a little bit faster than where he was a week ago. And we've said it already, but all they can expect or hope for is to just have some improvement this time of the year and get more race experience. So great performance there for Fink. Has to be a tough time for these athletes, uh, Brittany. So many events crunched into a, a tight time frame since, well, since really the trials for Tokyo in 21. But I really think going off of, you know, the, the pandemic years where they didn't have the opportunity to race, this is really advantageous for these swimmers to get the chance to just get some, some reps off the blocks. And it's, it's different than practice, but they really are just exemplifying what they would do in practice, putting themselves under pressure, putting themselves in some pain and getting to having to persevere through it. So this is a great way to kind of get those, uh, that practice underway. Nick Fink about a second faster in the final than he was in the heats and he is on top, the winner for the second straight week. Uh, congratulations, Nick. You had a cracking start to the series last week in Berlin. This was 19.4 points. Get you started off for the weekend. It was a good race as well, racing on these side, uh, side these guys. It's always a good race. I mean, have you seen all the races tonight? They're so close, so. Uh, you know, elite, so it's, it's fun being here and, and racing all these guys. And that's, uh, you know, you were saying to me it's important to sort of see where you're at uh, when it comes to racing at the start of the season. Is it also good to see where everyone else is? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's early in the season, the short course season, even though we're halfway through the cluster, but, um, you know, short course worlds and, 
you know, some of these guys have NCs and stuff, so it's fun to kind of see where everyone is, yeah. It's fun to watch. I don't know, Cap, you were looking to punch your ticket to Melbourne. You just did it. You've got to be over the moon with that. Yeah, I'm really happy. Um, as, I, as you said, the main goal coming here was to try and qualify for Short Course Worlds, and I'm really happy I could do it here. Uh, it's a great place, love Canada. Used to come up here all the time when I was younger. Really happy I could do it here. Well, it was brilliant to watch, mate. Congratulations. We'll see you in Melbourne. Reese, I love watching you two race each other. It's awesome. Are you going to get him in next week? Uh, we'll see. I mean, all these boys are really good. Uh, Nick is obviously one of the best in the world for a long time now, so you have to respect that. But, I mean, everybody in here wants to race, so it'll be fun. Can't wait to see how it pans out next week. Good luck for the rest of the weekend, boys. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your winner, Nick Fink. <laughs> so Fink, number one, Casper Corbo from the Netherlands, two, and Reese Whitley from USA, number three. The one and two, the same as last week in Berlin. Talk about swimmers that can do it all. Nick Fink is currently uh, studying for his PhD at Georgia Tech currently. So he is a, a lifer in terms of student and, and constantly learning. and. One of the smartest people I know. This is the women's 50-meter freestyle final. Next event in the pool, women's 53. Blake and Australia. you will miss it. Holly Barrett. Australian Holly Barrett. It's hard to make a name when you're an Australian swimmer. There's just so many greats. In lane one, representing United States of America, Linnea Mack. And she's been scratching at the USA national team for the last couple of years. Swam at UCLA. Also Elaine earlier seven, tonight had a strong performance already. So second Kira of the night. Tussin. Another well-known name in international swimming representing the Netherlands, Kira Toussaint. Elaine out of lane two, number seven. Representing United States of America, Erica Brown. And Erica Brown is a key relay swimmer for Team USA, two-time Olympic medalist. Swims at the University in of Tennessee, six, also representing with Australia, Kira Susan. Meg Harris, another of the Aussie speedsters, uh, part of the team that was in three, representing setting uh, world records Maddie in the relay. Wilson. And we talk about Australia, we talk about sprint freestyle. Maddie Wilson actually used to be a backstroker. Now we see her more in the freestyle side in of things. Five, she has a 2021 Canada, World Cup gold medal Maggie in this event. McNeil. Maggie McNeil, the Canadian 22-year-old Olympic champion in the butterfly winner and earlier tonight. Four, Can she get the double? And here's the woman to beat in this race, Wasik from Poland. She won this race a week ago in Berlin. She was also the bronze medalist at the 2021 Short Course World Championships. So middle of the pool there, Washick in four, McNeil in five, and then on either side, don't forget about those two Australians and don't go to sleep on the two Americans in one and two either. Yeah, and Wasik, you're seeing now, she was very in control in Berlin, but who wasn't in Berlin? Maggie McNeil, and now she has to go neck and neck with the Canadian superstar who just came off a 50 back win, and you gotta think that feels pretty good. Three swimmers went under 24 seconds in uh, this, the heats. The fastest was Wasik, a 30-year-old Polish swimmer in 23.75. She'll be the one to beat coming out of lane four. Maggie McNeil right beside her on her left in five. Just two lengths of the pool, women's 50-meter freestyle. Yeah, and this is a blink and you'll miss it. You will keep an eye on the fact that these swimmers will take a breath rarely, if at all. And it's Wasik at 25, head down. She is fighting. Wasik and Maggie McNeil yet to come out of the water. Now she does, trying to challenge. But it is Wasik, and the Polish swimmer is going to go back to back. And in second place, it is Maggie McNeil in a 23.74 time. But look at that, 23.27 for Katarzyna Wasik. And in third place, it was Maddie Wilson, the Aussie. Yeah, and that was a beautiful example of what I talked about on the first 25. But Maggie McNeil, not that it ended up coming down to the touch, but Maggie McNeil took two breaths neck and neck to each other on that second 25. And that's just something in the 50 free short course you really can't afford to do. So Wasik kept her head down, stayed within control. And for those of you wondering, well, what the heck's so bad about a breath? You have to make sure you're keeping your momentum up. It is such a short race that any small movement of your head 
and cause for drag in your stroke will slow you down. So this is where you see how much power she comes into the wall. Her head position stays so tight and McNeil comes in just a little bit shy. Again, a strong swim for both of them, but that's where I'd say the difference maker here was tonight. And an impressive time for Wasik, the Polish swimmer. She went 32 last week, 23-32. She betters that just a hair in Toronto here. McNeil and Wilson also on the podium. So an impressive swim by uh, these swimmers. Splash and dash, and on top it is Wasik from Poland. Well, I think the smile kind of said it all at the end of that race, Katarzyna. I think 0 0.04 faster than Berlin as well, getting faster every week. Yeah, I'm really happy. This is national Polish national record. I knew I can come back with best time. I, I was really a bit nervous in the call room, and I just knew I'm going to go fast. <laughs> <laughs> I love to see it. And congratulations, national record. 19.5 points as well towards uh, your score. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. Maggie, second time here tonight. Fantastic way to start your weekend. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. I mean, I have been swimming for five years before today, so it's definitely good to improve my time and see where I can go this, this year. And it's like 250s, right? Just a little splash and dash start and end of the evening. Yeah, 250s are kind of fun for me. I mean, 100 is kind of my sweet spot, but 50s are a good way to start. Well, we love watching you race them. Uh, uh, Maddie as well, I know you've got uh, some of the Aussie team over here from, from Australia. Join us in Toronto. Not just racing, you getting out to enjoy Toronto at all? Yeah, absolutely. It's always nice traveling around and seeing the amazing places that we get to go to with swimming. So really happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Katashina. I don't know about her, but I don't know the weather right now in Australia might be a little bit warmer than it is here in <laughs> it's Toronto. It's been pretty good lately. It is. Well, I'm great. I'm glad to hear that in their summer, they still enjoy coming here in our fall. So we'll take it. And I love hearing other swimmers getting the chance to come to Canada. Uh, I love showing it off myself. So really, really great and great interviews there. It sounds like these ladies had a lot of fun racing tonight, which is the most important thing. Beautiful colors as well. This is the yeah, Another world record by uh, Caleb Dressel is the one that these next swimmers will be chasing in the men's 50 meter freestyle. And Matt Temple, the Australian, usually we think of him as a butterfly star, but he will be chasing the podium in the 50 free. Representing Brazil, Pedro Spajari. Pedro, another Brazilian. We have quite a few here this weekend. He swam in the ISL for the Tokyo Frog Kings. In lane seven, representing United States of America, Drew Kibler. 22-year-old American Drew Kibler comes out of uh, lane seven, in trying to better his 21-62 time. Joshua Lindo. Josh already swimming the 100 butterfly here tonight. This 50 freestyle is the event. He won bronze at the 2021 Short Course World Championships. In lane six, representing United States of America. Often think of Brooks, Brooks Curry on those Curry. super speedy US relay teams in a supporting role. He'll be trying to earn some hardware himself here to better his 21 3 5 time. Justin Reef. And Justin is a three-time NCAA champion swimming for North Carolina State University. In lane five for Australia. Australian Kyle, Kyle Chalmers. Chalmers. Uh, well, he was on a TV show a few years ago down under. He's a Rio Olympic champion in the 100 free. He was and second in this event last week to Dylan Carter. Trinidad and Tobago, Dylan Carter. Yeah, from Trinidad and Tobago, Dylan Carter, the only one this morning under 21 seconds, this looked very man. strong and in control of that race. You got to think he got some confidence after winning this event in Berlin just one week ago. So Dylan Carter beat Chalmers last week in Berlin. He beat him in the heats this morning. Maybe Kyle Chalmers has an answer. Who knows? He'll be racing out of lane five beside Carter in four. There's the great Kyle Chalmers. And we'll keep an eye on this breathing for these men. I doubt we'll see any, but this, is, you blink quite literally in 20 seconds and it's over. So all the little things add up. Two Americans certainly to watch as well. In lane six, Curry. In lane three, Ress. And then don't forget about Canadian Josh Leendo. 
lane two, and they are underway. Men's 50-meter freestyle. You can see some of the youngsters lined up along the pool. What an honor for the Canadian young youth get to watch a race like this. It is very tight in the middle of the pool. Finally coming out is Dylan Carter, and he's got a slight lead maybe on Kyle Chalmers. Here comes Curry as well, and it is Dylan Carter who takes it again under 21, 20.91, 20 and it is Curry second and Chalmers third. Big win there, back-to-back -back World Cup wins, and he looks very happy about it, Dylan Carter from Trinidad. And Kyle Chalmers also having a lot of fun, which is great to see. Full beard, no rest, but you gotta get up, you gotta race, and to be able to do it against some of your biggest competitors at the end of the season, but do it at this point, I think is a really special opportunity for these men. So back-to-back 50-meter -back freestyle wins for Dylan Carter over Kyle Chalmers, no less. And uh, he'll try to sweep next week in Indianapolis. But impressive times as well. He went 2077 last week. He goes 2091 here. Identical times in his heat and in his final for Dylan Carter from Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, and Brooks Curry looked about twice his size on that final 25. He had such power coming home, almost got closer to Dylan Carter if he had a couple more meters. So Liendo in fourth place, uh, the Canadian. But on top, Dylan Carter, who missed the podiums uh, three times this year by less than a tenth of a second at Commonwealth Games and World Championship combined. And so he does not want to leave any room for error. Dylan Carter, Kyle Chalmers, and Brooks Curry are standing by. I tell you what, I love watching the sprint races, uh, especially these 50s have been amazing on the series so far. Dylan, that's four in a row. Yeah, uh, it's a bit of a streak now, so we're keeping it going tomorrow. I know. Uh, 50 fly tomorrow? 50 backstroke and uh, maybe a touch in the 100 free with this boy. We'll see about that. Uh, well, I can't wait to see that one. Brooks, you just joined the tour here. Uh, racing some of the biggest boys in the world when it comes to this. It's got to be nice sort of experience as we, as we head into uh, the whole season. Yeah, I mean, it's great. I love racing all these guys. Um, I, I love racing in this pool, and uh, I'm super excited. Uh, 20 point, or 21 low. I'm really pleased with that, and excited for the rest of the meet. Uh, Kyle, as well, your races get progressively harder as we go along. It's a nice one to sort of dip your toe into the weekend. Thanks for reminding me of that. Um, I just wanted to enjoy that moment for a little bit before I start focusing on tomorrow, but tomorrow's the main dance. Um, and then, yeah, follow it up with the eight-lap dash on, on Sunday. So it does get progressively harder, but I love it. I love it. I love watching you do it as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Dylan Carter. Again, good camaraderie. Nice to see it. Yeah, really every post-race post, uh, post -race interview I've been really impressed with, you know, the joy and, and they're happy with where they're at. Um, obviously, you're getting the interview from the top three of each race, but it is, it is great to highlight some of these world-class performances and, and done so early in their season. Just two events left on the pro program, including the women's 100-meter individual this medley. Is the women's 100 meter it individual is the medley next world. event in the pool, and this is so much fun. It starts with butterfly, then backstroke, then breaststroke, and then freestyle. And we begin with last week's, uh, actually, the world champion in this event, Anastasia Gorbenko from Israel, who's third last week in Berlin. Mary Sophie Harvey, her second race of the night and her second time swimming out of lane one. So we'll see if it was good luck the first time around. Last week's winner and the silver medalist at the 2021 Short Course World Championships, Beryl Castadello, again from France, trying to better that 59-6-1. This could be interesting. We could have a race in lane seven and eight. We will absolutely have a race. Ruta there on your screen from Lithuania. Shocked the world by winning the 2012 Eight Olympic six. event in the 100 meter breaststroke. So this is an Sydney Olympic champion there. Sydney Pickram's had a good night already on the podium once. She will try to get there again three using all four disciplines. Of America, Nelson. 
So Bita is in the mix for the overall female World Cup standings at the top of there. So you think every Elaine point Fly would really matter to her right now. United States of America. Already Kelly one Pash. win tonight for Kelly Pash out of the University of Texas. She won the 200 meter butterfly. And She'll be in lane, lane five four, here for the 100 Sweden, IM. Louise Hansen. Louise is the oldest of two very successful Swedish swimming sisters. Try to say that three times fast. <laughs> her and her sister are both very successful on both the international final. stage, the NCAA stage, the Swedish swimming stage. Uh, but fun to see her here in Toronto. And as you mentioned, she used to swim for the Toronto Titans on the ISL field. So again, the swimmers will start 25 meters of butterfly, then 25 of backstroke then 25 of breaststroke, and then come home with 25 of freestyle. Even if you hate any of the strokes, Brittany, it's done so quickly. And this is so fun as a spectator to watch because there are so many girls that are strong sprinters and don't have a great breaststroke, but swim this anyway and try to hold on. And then there's someone like Pickram who has an amazing breaststroke, but not necessarily a fast sprint backstroke. And so the lead will change as these four laps go. So you're gonna have to watch very closely. It's a fun one to see. By the way, the world record in this event held by the great Katinka Hazu from Hungary, 56-5-1. Don't think that's in jeopardy, but who knows. Women's 400 meter individual medley. They will start when they come out of the water with the butterfly, briefly. This is Hansen's strength here. So she's in lane four and she'll expect to be the winner at the 25 and there she is, 11.68 for Hansen. That is so quick. Now they move into the backstroke. And Hansen trying to hold on, but up there in lane two is Francis Gastadello challenging. And in lane three is Speeda Nelson, who was second last week. Now they switch to the breaststroke. Uh, Nelson and Gastadello were one, two just a week ago, but Louise Hansen, and here comes the breaststrokers trying to catch them all. Sydney Pickram in the middle of that battle, so is Gastadello, and right now the lead is Kelly Pash. Actually, it's Hansen, and looking up there in lane number seven is Gastadello. Will she take it? Yes, she does. Beryl Gastadello in 57.97, and then Bita Nelson, and then Louise Hansen in third place. 57.97. We told you it would be fun. And I feel like we're reliving exactly what happened last week because it was Gastadello's uh, win at the end, but it was Nelson's race with a 25 to go, and that's exactly what happened here. After the breaststroke, it looked like Vita Nelson had this race in the bag, and Gastadello on the other end of the pool said, nuh uh, and uh, chased her down. Another time under 58 seconds, a strong swim, as you mentioned, and uh, that's a great way to end the female racing tonight. I think it was a very exciting one, and as you can see, look at the discrepancy already in the first 25 butterfly. This is a race that not many swimmers have the opportunity to swim as you can't do this event long course. So it is such a fun one. Each stroke is an absolute sprint. You give your all in a 25 of each stroke and just hope for the best on the last 25. But head down as we've talked about. Bita moving her head a little bit into the wall, but at the top of the screen was Gastadello that had her very narrowly by a tenth of a second. Castadello, Nelson, identical to last week in Berlin. Hansen on the podium as well. Beryl just saying this in height order, it's true. Beryl from lane seven, what a finish. That looks like so much fun, guys. The 100 IM is the only thing we see, see in short course. It must be fun to race. It's amazing, it's my favorite race. <laughs> just a lot happening and <laughs> it's really fun and I love racing those girls. And it's so fast. You got 19, hold on, I'm just getting your score. 19 point. Two, I've been told. So that's your start now for the rest of the, the weekend. Good luck for it. Congratulations, ladies. Give it up for Beryl Gastadello. Has a chance to sweep next week in Indianapolis. Beryl Gastadello with a strong finish and a strong second half, really, of that uh, women's 100 meter individual medley. And that sets the stage for the final event. Men's 100 meter individual medley, final event of tonight's program. And this, this should is be the men's fun. 100 meter individual medley final. In lane eight, representing Canada. Already Hamid. on the podium once. 
in front of the home crowd, Javi Azevedo was third in this event last week in Berlin. He's got the challenge to try to do it out of lane eight here. Representing South Africa, Matthew Seitz. Matthew Seitz, the winner earlier tonight in the foreign freestyle. This race quite a bit different, but he is battling for points here and big prize money, so every in race matters. seven, representing Brazil, Leonardo Coelho Santos. Carlos Santos, he is cool as a cucumber as he gets set to race out of lane seven, trying to better that 53-1-3 time. Italy, Thomas Chekon. Thomas Chekon is the world record holder, long course in the 100 backstroke. So talk about those that get out nice and fast in an event like the 100 IM. At the 50 mark, we have to expect that he is in going to be in front. Representing Canada, Finlay Knox. Canadian record holder in this event, set at last year's Short Course World Championships in Abu Dhabi, Finley Knox, out of Okotoks, Alberta. In lane three, representing Brazil, Xiao Pompitas. Xiao is another Brazilian star. He studied business administration at Georgia Tech University, which was where I recently said Nick Fink is also studying, so. In lane five, representing United States of America, Shane Casas. From Texas, Cassis. Shane Casas, 22 years of age, gold in the 100 back at last year's short course world championships, coached by Eddie Reese. And in lane four, representing United States of America, Trenton Julian. Trenton Julian, the American in lane four. He's a three-time 2021 short course world champion. For the last time, Canada, our last race of the night. Give it up for your men's 100 meter individual medley well, final. This should be interesting. American battle there in the middle of the pool. Canadian Finley Knox will try to challenge a couple of Brazilians in the mix as well. And we're gonna have to keep an eye out for lane two, Thomas check on. He is the world record holder, as I mentioned, long course hunter back. He's also the 2022 world champion in that 100 back. He won bronze in this event at the 2021 short course world championship. So and it, he won last week. Exactly. <laughs> so you, you have to kind of find it hard to not kind of see. But then we have Matthew Sates out in lane number one. And, you know, we just watched him swim the 400 free, and you wouldn't really assume that the 400 freestylers and the 100 IMers would overlap, but he is here to prove that he can do it all. And he came second last week in Berlin and Acevedo actually took the bronze. So all three of the medalists from a week ago are in this heat here in Toronto. So we will quite simply call it as we see it. I think that's the answer. Again, they will start with uh, the butterfly. And they are off in the men's 100 meter individual medley. About five strokes of butterfly before they switch to backstroke. And the lead is Shane Casas in 1034. Yeah, and Shane is another name that will be strong on the backstroke. We saw him earlier tonight in the 200. It looks like he is leading at the halfway mark. He is indeed in 22.85, and it is Chacon who won last week in 23.08 in second place in lane number two. He is trying to challenge on the breaststroke leg. And Matthew States hoping he doesn't get too far away here, trying to sneak in for a few more points. Shane Casas in lane number five, swimming home in this men's 100 meter individual medley. Here comes Casas, he's getting first. Who is gonna get second? And it is Chacon in lane two who gets second. And then Matthew Sate sneaks into third place out of lane number one. Been a great race there for Shane Cassis. A strong performance from start to finish. I'm pretty sure he was our leader from the first 25 all the way to the end. Big smiles there from Matthew Sates after having to do a 400 free. I'm sure that 100 IM feels pretty great. And not only that, but he's on the podium. Yeah, there you go. 51.03 again, the winning time for Shane Cassis. Pretty good night for him in Toronto. Yeah, and it was a great night here in Toronto to get us started in the World Cup stage and as you see here that finishing off with the 100 im like i said it's just such a fun event to watch because so much can happen and then you see on the men's side the, the leader from start to finish so there is a little bit of everything and we uh we have to stay on our toes here that's for sure but head down you see on that flags to the wall which is crucial especially the shorter the race is and that's how we got the win there tonight shane casas our champion in the 100 im yeah he left nothing to uh 
to Chance there, winning by over six tenths of a second over Chacon, who was the winner last week in Berlin. And then Sates, again, under 52 seconds. And then the two Canadians, Azevedo fourth in 52.03, Finley Knox fifth in 52.11. Shane Casas and the top three standing by. Well, I tell you what, what a fantastic way to finish off our night's racing. Shane, uh, two for two. It's good to see you swim that. We didn't have you there in, in Berlin. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was good. I, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, I messed up in Berlin and got ninth, so that was kind of a slip up. But no, it feels good. I love short course meters. I like traveling the world. This is just so exciting, and I'm really excited to be in this position. And you know what, we love watching it. You guys have absolutely crushed it. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got Shane Cassis in first, Thomas Check on in second, and Matthew Sates killing it over there in third. Give it up for our final race of the night. And what a show the swimmers have put on, including that victory by Shane Cassis. Pretty good night for him and pretty good night of swimming. Brady. Yeah, we started it off with that women's 400 freestyle, which are two of the fastest performances we've seen ever. If it were two days ago, we would have seen a world record tonight. So we have to understand that this is world-class swimming. We're here to watch in Toronto and how exciting for the city, but also to this, this World Cup circuit. We're only halfway through and on the first night of that halfway. So lots fun to come. And I think they really set the tone here for what we're going to see in the next two days. Well, if you can get here to the Toronto Pan Am Sports Centre, please do so for the next two days. And otherwise, we are glad to have you on the broadcast worldwide. The FINA Swimming World Cup Toronto 2022. On behalf of Brittany McLean, Olympic medalist, my name is Rob Snook. Glad to have you along. It's been a great night of swimming. Two more to come from Teal.